Welcome to Car Pervert, I'm Johnny Smith. This is episode number two about my Allegro Street Sleeper. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, have a look at this video first, which explains what it is. But essentially, it's an Austin Allegro, a car that I've always been quite fond of, despite people hating them. And I decided to do an, a British Street Sleeper project. Nothing too mad, but quite a lot of detail. In this episode, we're going to be going to Midland Performance and Retro. In fact, I'm already here. It's just there. And these guys are cracking on with reviving the original paint as best as possible, stripping the interior. And we're also going to be fitting up what I hope to be uh, a better brake solution to the car. I've also got uh, Forge Motorsport coming to visit the car to look at the options we have for both radiator cooling and charge cooling because we're hoping to supercharge the car. Let's go. Oh, it's absolutely miserable today, British summer. So here we are at MPR in Shropshire. Uh, you can see MPR is a company, Midland Performance and Retro. They do a bit of everything. Engine transplants, general restorations, modifications. You can just hear, see here by the front door, you've got a Subaru Impreza Type R, the two door one, an Austin Allegro, uh, sorry, an Austin Ambassador um, low mileage car, but they also do all sorts of stuff like um, classic minis, VW Corrados, Audi A2s, there's all sorts of stuff going on here. And Mike, the, the guy that runs Midland Performance and Retro, he said to me uh, that he really wanted to help finish the Allegro project, the never ending story. Um, and he understands the ethos behind it, wanting to preserve as much originality on the face of it as possible, but all the custom detail to be really well thought through. And that's why I'm here. So I'm gonna go through the door. Yeah. You join me in the hustle and bustle of Midland performance and retro. This episode, we're gonna do several things to the Allegro. The boys have actually already started machine polishing the original paint. This is the side that hasn't had any attention at all. It's really dull. But when I bought the car, I always had a hunch that the original paint was actually pretty good considering. Um, and we're gonna bring it all back up, uh, finish doing that today. So this is the side that's bad. That's the side that's had a bit of attention already. And we're gonna crack on and do that using a multitude of products. Mike runs MPR and uh, you've been busy with the polish by the look of it, it looks incredible. Yeah, we've uh, made a start, um, just so you can see um, what can be achieved and just to, 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 to show you what, what you face with the, with the paint because obviously there's probably some areas you're going to want to rectify, some you're going to want to leave um, for, for you know, sort of patina and original look. Um, we just use these uh, for regular items. Um, that's just your, your sort of normal compound which does the vast majority of the polishing with one of these microfibers. Um, it's, so is it's, that the first thing you do then? Yeah, it's basically like a, um, well, almost a woolen type pad which has got a very aggressive cut. And then um, you use the same compound with uh, th this yellow pad here which is a bit more flexible and gets into, you know, all, all the sort of curves and that without burning through. Um, and then you go uh, through the grades um, onto the um, the next cutting compound, which you do with a slightly um, slightly less uh, aggressive pad, and then all the way down to the fine finish, uh, which you use with, with the least aggressive pad at all, which just gets rid of like the, the minor scratches and probably uh, little imperfections you put in it f uh, f from polishing it. Um, at this stage there's no sort of wax or any sealant on it um, because obviously at some stage we are going to be doing some paint work and that can cause reactions in the paint like you know um, fish eyes, uh, micro blisters and anything like that so obviously being in the body shop environment we're very big on everything has to be silicon free which the, the Ferretla range is designed for body shops uh, as well as you know it is quite DIY friendly, so if you want to machine polish your own car, that's fine. Yeah. Um, that's about it for this stage, really. Um, we can go deeper into it. We can use more sort of refinishing techniques, some more heavy duty abrasives than what we've got here. Um, special cutting disc, we can wet sand it with actual gritted sandpaper. But again, we're not doing a final finish here. We're just showing off 
what you've got. So uh, I was amazed what, what we when you on the next stage. You did say to me, I reckon you can probably bring it up quite nicely with just some, you know, some machine polishing and some yeah, some of the right processes. I mean, we know what can be achieved. It, you know, we've done it before, but it, it still has been a bit of a surprise to us at just how good the paint is. Um, obviously, the reputation on British Leyland paint, you're expecting it all to fall off or, or so people would <laughs> let, 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 you, let you believe. But the beauty with this is I think most of the paint is original. There's a couple of small blowings we can see on the car, well, on the other side of the car. But Do you want to show me those? Yeah. Um, the only real sort of bad area, you see, you just, I don't know if you can pick it up on camera, there's just a dark line there where it's been blown in. Um, uh, yeah, I'd okay. say that was done probably early in the car's life. Um, it was probably quite a good repair for the time. It's probably just faded at different rates over the years um, it has had some impact damage here but we'll go into that a bit later when we look at other areas of the car so uh, other than that it's uh, it seems to have had not not too bad a life there's a couple of dents and scrapes on it but for, for the age of the car and the originality of the paint it's uh, yeah it's quite fine really well that bodes well doesn't it yes that bodes really well so you guys have done this side by yeah. taking out the glass, um, taking off those rear vents, a couple of the other things to enable access. Yeah, we haven't stripped too much off it at this stage because again, it's just to, to, to show yourself what you've got and, you know, for yourself to make a decision on, on where you want to go with the paint, what repairs you want to do. Because as we'll find later, there are a few scabs on it and, and bits that you'll, you'll want to tend to, but Oh, that. there's that bit under the rear window, isn't there? Yeah, we've still got to get that out, so there'll be a bit of a, a big reveal with that later. But the rest of the window apertures are actually really good. Um, the front windscreen, there's no real corrosion on it. This this side window here, um, very clean, no rust at all, really that clean up well. We haven't taken the other side out yet, so again, that might be a bit of a reveal for later on. You haven't seen any terrible bodges, that's kind of good, isn't it? No, not yet. There's Bodges still, are bad. Yeah, there's, there's, there's still time, there's still some shipping <laughs> down to do, but uh, early signs are pretty promising. The, honestly, that this is so abrasive. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's the touch that uh, probably makes a bigger impact than the, than the actual uh, visual side of it. Okay, so the seats are out and um, you can see down there, that's obviously where the mouse lived, uh, naughty mouse. I hope it hasn't like really gone to town underneath the, the seat and had anything to do with the wiring loom. Um, the original Allegro mats, these. I mean, they've just disintegrated in situ. They just have gone so hard. And there, you can't see it so well here, but I did v video it when I first... Look, a poor mouse that's tried to get out the hole in the sill and never quite made it. This is C CSI mouse nest. <laughs> now that's, that's not bad for a mouse. That's a fairly respectful mouse yeah. as it goes. Yeah, quite a bit of respect anyway, didn't you? Yeah. I'm going to have a quick look under the... Uh, I mean... Try to see if you can... It is not... Not too bad. You know, I know the truth of the rot is usually in the footwells, isn't it? The lower yeah. portions, but... This, this mat hasn't been out in... In years, it's as stiff as a board. Look at the carpet underneath. Yeah, well, there you go, look. You Quite well reserved. <laughs> you can see the colour difference. This carpet can't stay, really. Wow, look at that. That's really, really, really good. That's pretty good. 
Are those just stuck there like self-adhesive? Oh no, they're not even stuck. I think they were at one point. But that's kind of good, because I've yeah. had cars rot under those parts. I think this is where the mouse was. Probably that's that is, that's down to the mouse, I'd say. That is mouse feces. <laughs> Look at this. Look at that. That's all right, that is. I'm getting pleased. I'm very pleased. Just goes to show, when you buy a car for spares or repair, it can sometimes be a lot, lot better than you think. This was never a spares or repair car. So we are, we've, we've taken the whole carpet set out and it really does look like no one's ever repaired it, touched it. You can see on this side, the driver's side, the wiring loom runs along here with this tape. And this is how it was done um, from the factory. I'm really impressed with the floor pan. Certainly in, in, internally, it's, it's remarkable. But we've, we've got one, one last job here. Um, we've got to remove some death. We've left him here. There, the sill mouse. Bless him, look at him. He obviously had a really big dinner and then couldn't get out the sill and was like, this is it, I'm doomed. Are you gonna remove the... I try to. Stop, 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 nobody wants to see mouse death extraction. Let's get back to the Allegro machine polishing. Windows coming out for the first time. Makes the machine polishing process a bit easier. Repair the Repair them. This is a bit of the bodywork actually that I did. I did this damage when I was transporting it from one lock up to another. Like a total idiot. And then this rear valance where someone's had a little bit of a parking knock. Can you see that crease that with the spider? marks here look there it's those creases it's pushed in the bumper bracket slightly but I think we're going to try and massage that out rather than replacing the valance the, the rest of the valance is pretty good and then round here where one of the old lady uh, one of the old lady accident damage areas with the rear arch someone's brush painted a repair in there as you did Out she comes, there we go, look, as suspected, there is corrosion under those bubbles, one and two. This is Luke Amon. He's the development manager for Forge Motorsport. He's a lovely man and he's come to work out where we're going to put the radiator in the Allegro. Just wanted to get you in Luke early. Well, okay, yeah. yeah. Before we get bogged down with maybe going down the wrong road. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to definitely decide whether there was any chance of front radiator fitment. I think at this moment in time you're very limited and I think you were right and saying that it was too tight on space. <laughs> yeah. Because look, there's now we've got it here. There's one sort one rocker cover there, and it is right in f behind the uh, where the grill goes. The grill. I mean, my other concern is is of course you've got manifolds out right there. Yeah. So even if we were to put, you know, a very slim radiator that, that just goes in the grill here, we're gonna have a lot of heat. Yeah, um, yeah it's, it's, it's not going to be... It's going to be fighting against the yeah. manifold all the yeah. time, isn't it? Um, what I wouldn't want to happen is, you know, to be sat in traffic and then yeah. Yeah. start edging towards the uh, yeah, it's always, upper of the end. It's always a danger. It's Behind you, Luke, is the f yeah. is the, is, is, it, is a spare okay. front, front balance. So you, you can see these grills that the car came with, yeah. which we could actually put to functional use. Yeah, so so maybe you could sit an oil cooler um, behind one of those if you, you know, if you were to to cut this neatly. Yeah. Um, maybe weld a weld a, a bit of um, 
sheet metal behind that almost to make a bit of yeah. a bit of a feed to your cooler. Yeah, so it yep. goes to the right. Um, I mean you have got it mounted in the ideal orientation. Um, what you certainly don't want to do is, is mount it the other way so you've got your feeds yeah. coming out at the bottom because you get cavitation. Yeah. Um, so that's the best way to mount it. But maybe you could change uh, change position, yeah. Good, we might reuse one of the original Allegro parts. Yeah, it'd be nice to have the um, have the grills still in the front. They're quite big. They? Yeah, they are. So you could actually, yeah. yeah, you could force a reasonable amount of air in there. Small intercooler there. That's actually for um, for an old Mark IV Golf. Um, traditional side mount rather than the front yeah. mounted that lots of people yeah. would go for on an aftermarket. Um, it's all fabricated in house. We machine all of the parts. Obviously, bend the sheet metal, etc. Um, so that is an intercooler, but it's the same principle as a charge cooler. Yeah. Um, so with the charge cooler, what we would do is make a water jacket that would go uh, around the um, intercooler itself. Um, we're going to pass water in through the core and out. Your air is going to be obviously going through the intercooler. That essentially could mount something like that. Of course, it would have a water jacket on there. Um, your tubes would come out in a different orientation. Yeah. Um, and then your pipes would be fed off to the uh, radiator core yeah. um, that essentially is going to cool this. So, you know, in terms of space, I mean, you could mount in there that way. Okay. Um, so we don't need to go huge on a charge cooler. No. No. Um, but it is another radiator core you're going to have to mount. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was going to say the front, this side of the engine, um, is is where the only space is really. I mean, I know the the engine is partially disma dismantled at the moment, but um, the oil cool is going to have to be uh, relocated. But the I think down there it could be upright, couldn't it, Mike? Yeah, there's no reason why it could, couldn't be down there. Just have to reflow. Because the supercharger is probably going to go somewhere here. Um, and then, I mean, when you when you say about the the oil cooler, maybe that might might have to change position. We can um, we can incorporate something like that on the side of the charge cooler, yeah. so we could fabricate uh, an oil cooler. Yeah. Um, you know, whatever shape or size that you, yeah. that you need, yeah. if you find somewhere that you think is a bit more suitable. Yeah. And, yeah. and the traditional sort of, I'm not sure that's probably a 14 row, um, wouldn't fit in. Yeah. Then we could just not. So you could up. get you could build a combined unit. Correct. Yeah. 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 So, so yeah. essentially, there there is an option to to potentially cut some of this this yeah. away. Then, and yeah. I presume fuel tank is located under here. Yeah. And is that something that you'd potentially move or, or relocate? Or uh, as long as Johnny's happy with that, yeah. It's there's there's plenty of options for that. Point. We can Just change the fuel tank position <laughs> if right. we need to. Okay. You know, it could go right up behind the seat. Yes, sort of here somewhere yeah, maybe. Yeah, as long as that doesn't inter interfere with it, with it falling, that's a odd Right, because I was going to ask you exactly that, whether yeah. we... Um, let's have a quick look underneath. Okay, that's quite a large large tank, isn't it? Yeah. It's, yeah, so... It is actually. It's deceiving, yeah, because yeah. when, you, when, when you look from, from above, it looks, it it looks quite small, big, yeah. isn't it? But it's actually a fair size. Okay. So, so yeah, I mean, it's 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 an option, isn't it? Is to 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 maybe neatly mount it um, horizontally in the in, in, in the back there. I mean, the 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 firewall as such is. I mean, you could replace that with a with a piece of aluminium, couldn't you, yeah. if you needed to? That's what I was thinking. Something solid, just yeah. for safety, anyway. So I mean, that that's a forty-two mil um, core there on on the width. Um, as you can see, it is a twin tube, um, but we can manufacture this as a single, okay? Yeah. Um, so, so that's two 14s. What we try and do is do it as a 42, because obviously capacity yeah. is going to be yeah. a lot better for you. Um, but it was just something that, that we had in my development room, um, probably something that we've used for, for another vehicle. Yeah. Um, maybe it didn't fit properly and, and, and whatnot. So in terms of size, that probably wouldn't be a particular, particularly bad. That's not that far size, out, is it? Yeah, no. um, 
costoso ¿no? So there's a larger tube there. So, okay, so that's, a, single that's a single tube. So yeah. that would probably be better for your application because we're not going to be getting so much airflow um, because it's, it's rear mounted. Yeah. And again, the fin pitch on this one is slightly different um, to the other there. It uh, doesn't really look, look much different, but what we can do is we can... They never do until you put them no. next to another. So we, we can change the fin pictures. Oh. I mean, if you look at the two there, they're, they're quite dissimilar. Um, fin height is different. Fin pitch is different. Um, so the, the denser the, the, the fin, um, the better it's going to be for, for, for cooling, essentially. Yeah. Um, however, you do need good airflow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we could typically open up the fin pitch, so it's going to encourage the fans to draw the air through. Um, if it was too coarse, yeah, we're not going to be getting much yeah. up from, from under because the car. Need to... It just so happens that the bit that does it needs need attention anyway. Might be uh, assigned to to mount it back there. It, it's, it seems. I think going with your sort of original plan and, and ethos, if we keep the outside looking original and standard, inside looking original and standard, then you've got under the bonnet's obviously going to be heavily modified. And if you do the same in the boot, it's you know just keeping it to those two exactly. areas. Exactly. We'll still obviously try and make it look everything look like it's meant to be there, but yeah. the, the sort of custom element will be you know confined to those two spaces. To best totally. Best. You've got some sheet that comes up like this. Yeah. You know, ideally removable. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, and you paint it the same colour as the body and stuff. Yeah. It probably to to an untrained eye, they wouldn't really think that there's anything peculiar in there. Yeah. Is this the is this the first F Allegro that Forge have worked on? It certainly is. Yes. Is it? I was, I was hoping. <laughs> I, if, as I said yeah. that, I thought I bet they've gone. No, no. This is like our fourth. <laughs> no, if only it was. <laughs> yeah. I would. I would probably try and get get this sat just below the level of, of that so the top of the core would be on that plane does that make sense yeah, just take a picture just to just to remind myself yeah yeah so so the top of the, the top of the core is going to sit about in between that and that okay yeah. so lower yeah. than the corrugated yeah, yeah because floor. what I, I what i don't want is you cut this out yeah um and, and then if the rad's too high yeah this this part here is gonna it's, it's gonna sit underneath the rod. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's not gonna get the air. It's not gonna get the air. So we, we wanna get it fairly low. What I thought was would you could you like stand the, the number plate off by about an inch, louver or cut completely out the yeah, balance behind or, the plate? Or cut some holes with some yeah. dimple dies, can you? Yeah. Um, and then that allows air out. out. Yeah. So so ideally you'd have the rear of the radiator sealed. Um, to a duct in, in the back, yeah. um, maybe some twin fans yeah. on, on, the, on the top there. Um, obviously, they wouldn't be visible. Um, and with that vacuum, you'd like to think that it would draw some up from, yeah. from underneath, yeah. um, or potentially put in a bit of a scoop on the on the front of the rad. So as you're moving forward, it obviously wants to push it through yeah. the core yeah. and then out through the back. Um, that's cer certainly an option. So the car's now been machine polished all over and it, it really does look so much better than I expected it to. It's got a couple of war scars and things, but we kind of knew about those. We especially knew about that because I did it, uh, which I'm not pleased about, but anyway. So once we've decided which bits are gonna need repairing, then we'll know whether to, to paint like that bit, for example, and maybe paint repair this and the, the arch on the other side. But now, windows are out, it's time to move the car around, put it on the four poster ramp, and we can have a look underneath it to decide what we're gonna do with regards to the chassis detail, and we're also gonna offer up the brakes. So up there you can see the aggro, you can see it's uh, got the front wheels taken off so we can look at the brakes, the Golf Mark II GTI calipers and discs 
um, the gas adjustable coilovers. Now we're going to keep the um, adjustable coilovers um, and finish those, but I always had a bit of reservation about using those golf discs um, and calipers because I thought they might not be quite powerful enough if I take the car on a track and I want to do the occasional track day. I know that sounds weird, you don't hear track day and Austin Allegro in the same sentence, but that is what I'm going to do. So originally, I managed to find a 14 inch wheel to clear those discs and the 14 inch wheel that looked similar 14 inch that looked similar was this from a Polo Mark IV and what we did was welded tabs on the edge of the basic steel wheel so in order to keep the street sleeper look the hubcap still fitted now I am going to get new hubcaps don't worry However, trouble arose when I thought, I don't think those brakes are going to be up to it. What can I go for? And the reality is there aren't that many brakes uh, that will fit, performance brakes that will fit behind a 14. Then I spoke to Wartech, company who have done, if you've watched my video on the Dodge Charger, they've done my exhaust on the Charger, and they're known for brakes. That's handy. So what we did do is we then spoke to them about different calipers, in this instance stainless steel six piston uh, fully floating ones and 300 mil discs this kit they developed for a uh, Ford GT40 uh, recreation car um, and for in historic racing so this and that fit behind a 15 inch wheel so what I've done is I've got a couple of these as examples. This one's actually a used one from a GT40. We're going to offer these up because then they need to design the bell, the bracket, to fit this on. And we've got one, a set of calipers for the back. And the wheel... Oh. The wheel that we think will fit and also look authentic is this. Yes, I've been on another steel wheel mission. This is from a base model Peugeot 207. Really similar oval holes to the Allegro. And hopefully, hopefully you'll agree, when they've got tabs and a hubcap fitted, they look even more realistic. So the sleeper look will be maintained. But that way these clear, these discs, and the big calipers, which means you can drive the car hard, you can use it on a racetrack, but it still doesn't hide, doesn't give away, sorry, what it's showing. That makes no sense at all. You know what I mean. Sheep and wolf's clothing, wolf in sheep's clothing thing. Can I get all three of you on camera to universally agree, officially, <laughs> that this is a very solid car? Yeah, this is very solid. Very surprising. This is the end of this sill cover, this plastic sill cover where there's a stone chip guard. And even behind here, look, there's a couple of little paint scabs, but really, really solid, like spookily solid. Hold on, I got some uh, rusty in. Let's do a sweepstake. Is the sill going to be rotten and hanging, or is, and is it going to come off in your hand with the sill cover? <laughs> I'm saying solid. Say solid but scabby. Okay. Don't make it personal. <laughs> uh, ready? Okay. Let's see what's going to happen. Bodies. Wow. Unbelievable. <laughs> Look at that. I mean, that's quite Planet an fresh. I'm, I'm, I'm actually, I'm really quite excited. Cobwebs. That, but look at that! Look at that! That seam line down there, down the, the bottom, bottom of the sill. That closing panel looks really good. Before I start getting hate mail about carving up a really original car, I need I need to just remind you guys of two things. Firstly, we're not going to carve it up as much as you think. Secondly, I bought this car in 2007, and back then. You couldn't, you honestly couldn't give them away. A really good condition one with an MOT was 500 quid. And this was good condition, but no MOT sold as spares or repair. So, I, you know, I'm not a butcher. The whole idea of this is to do it respectfully, but at the same time, yes, it is going to be modified. Um, and yes, 
I bought it a long time ago for uh, not a lot of money, but then they weren't worth much. Mike is under the car. Now this is interesting. We've taken the, the sill covers off and it's shockingly good. Um, normally you'd get hidden moisture and rot under there and the Allegro has been pleasingly solid. So that's good, right? Yeah, it's, uh, it's excellent really, all things considered. Um, you can see original under seal everywhere under here, which I, I don't think anything's been added to that, has it, since, since new as that you're aware of? No, um, no. Yeah, there's, you know, on the main floors, th there's nothing really to report. I mean, we did see this from the inside when we took the carpets out before it's been jacked up in the wrong place at some point to crush that, that jacking oh, yeah. point. Yeah. Not a massive issue. There's, um, y you know, we'll sort of manipulate that back, back into shape. Um, and then on this side under the sill cover, this side is, is very good indeed. Um, slight bit of surface rust, which you're always gonna gonna get that really, but they're very very original, very solid. Um, on the other side, that was not quite so good. There's a some areas to address here. Again, that could well have been been caused by that jacking point being crushed. Um, and right up in the front on side, the, the inner wing is a a bit of rot just in there which needs addressing again it, it's, uh, it, 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 it's not horrendous but unfortunately it might mean the uh, the wing coming off um, which is something we're, we're trying to avoid given the originality and, and and the panel gaps which are as good as as good as they get on a car like this you know it's very solid welds but it's not being finished it's not good from a you know an aesthetic point of view and it, it's just sort of burns off all that all the factory under seal which is obviously something we're going to going to get get deeper into shortly yeah um but as you want this the underside to really be one of the show pieces of this i think we need to well first of all obviously strip everything off it um and then create whatever whatever you want really um something that looks you know like everything's meant to be here first and foremost build it all up then finish it off with uh, i think we're discussing the 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 raptor uh, bed liner which is yeah to, to, to put it in simple terms it's a more heavy duty version of your, your normal stone chip um it comes in two flavors really which is black which is simple functional or they do a tintable where you can put your your body color in there to to give it you know the same color which i think is the road that you want to go down yeah just to give it the yeah. contrast because you know all, all these parts be black and and whatever else you want, then probably you know the majority of it will be black. So you want you want to create a contrast. So there we go. There's the update on the Allegro V6. A little bit of work to do on the brakes. Obviously, the start of the strip down underneath, ready to do the the chassis detailing and finalise the suspension, and the fueling and the cooling. And of course, yeah, the cooling with Forge on board. We know now that the Rad is almost certainly going to end up back here somewhere but yeah bit of progress and a lot of progress on the paintwork which I'm really pleased about so hope you've enjoyed watching this little bit of progress on the Allegro sleeper if you haven't already subscribed please subscribe click the little bell icon then you'll be notified when I put a video up next typically I put a video up every week but not every week about the Allegro can't do that sorry <laughs>